Hey everybody, thank you for joining Talk Polkadot. My name is Ryan, and I have my co-host here, Judge, and today we have a really great guest, Jay Goldberg from Noddle, the C, uh, a CFO, or as he refers to himself, is it employee number three, Jay? Employee number three. Employee number three. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Oh, doing good, doing good. Um, really great to have you here. I have some, we have some really great questions for you, and uh, wanted to know more about more about Nodal and the uh, plan, plans ahead. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's 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 kick off and say, um, uh, can you tell us a bit about Nodal and what you uh, how it started and how it go, how it's going? Sure. So Nodal is building what, uh, what's known as a wireless wide area network, and uh, other companies that have wireless wide area networks, and that's quite a mouthful, are companies like AT and T and Verizon, or you know name your favorite wireless provider, uh, except we're not building a network to connect uh, HD video and stream that to your phone. We're not connecting, building a network to do person to person voice communication. Our network is for devices that have, are, you know, low powered. You, know, you, you can call it the, inter uh, the in internet of things, uh, but I think it's actually broader than that because it's not just low powered devices. We're actually finding ways to connect things that are unpowered. And so there's this vast, huge sea of devices and objects out in the world and we're building uh, a, a very decentralized, incredibly scalable way to connect all those things and communicate with them. Wow. And that's like, so we're talking about Bluetooth devices, which I'm uh, uh, billions, if not trillions of devices. So um, that seems like a pretty big feat. So yeah, we're, we're starting with Bluetooth and Bluetooth is uh, by far the most widely deployed uh, radio layer on the planet. Uh, but uh, we're, we're what we call air, air interface agnostic. Or, you know, we don't really care what the underlying wireless standard is. Oh. We do Bluetooth today because it's the most uh, commonly used. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've we've done uh, we can do all the other acronyms you, you want: Wi-Fi, LoRa, mm -hmm. uh, uh, CBRS, cellular. I mean, uh, we you know all, all those uh, can eventually be done. Oh, oh, cool! And this is and this is um, this is done uh, anonymously, correct? So when it comes to data tracking, regardless of the system, it's it's more about the data, not the identity, being being decentralized, correct? Yeah, that that's right. We're we're very we're privacy first, mm -hmm. and we were built uh, on uh, around this concept. And, and uh, this is this is lots of different uh, ways in which all internet things touch our lives today, and we're very careful to make sure that all the different aspects of ours are, are incredibly privacy centric, uh, and. You know, we, we there are lots of ways to take data in this world, as everybody knows, and, and we, we participate in as few of those as possible. We, we you know, we, for the most part, we don't take any personal information mm -hmm. from people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're we're not interested in people. We're interested in objects. And and what yeah. what I think is what I what I've heard the the conversations that I've joined on Twitter and, and uh, other uh, events with you guys, climate comes up a lot, which I think is really interesting because I was a uh, uh, in back in university uh, bachelor of science and like this seems groundbreaking if we're able to pull data from you know millions of devices on whether it's temperature or different readings that can help the climate. Is uh, do you speak on that? Yeah, so that's that's one of our, our favorite uh, projects where we would like to work on in, in terms of you know, non-commercial but societal impact things it can be really, really interesting. And uh, we're, I know we're going to get to this, but it's also a, a really good uh, blockchain use case because it's totally decentralized. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are lots of different ways we can play it. What, the, the one that I, I think about a lot is this idea that uh, very, you know, today we have a good, you know, global weather network, you know, really good. But it's it's fairly uh, large grain, like it's not super granular. Mm -hmm. You sort of know what the what temperature in the city is, and if you point to it, with a network like Nodal, you can actually get super fine grained micro level data down to the block in some cases. Wow! Wow! Uh, and 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 I'm you know I'm not a, a climate scientist, but I've I've heard and told many times that uh, the more accurate, the more precise granular data you can get. Uh, there's lots of ways you can use that to to deal with things like climate change and to make better predictions about things, um, knowing what it is block by block is really important. Um, and so there's a way that we can actually build this in a totally decentralized fashion where everybody participates, everybody has, you know, everybody chips in for their own local little weather sensor system. Uh, and then Nodal would coordinate it and, and stitch it all together and provide a single unified data. So you, everybody can go out and have their own sensors and you can connect them all up wow. and then wow. That's get all that data. that's crazy because that's like a digital advancement on on what I experienced with when it comes to like wildlife. So if if there's a researcher that's work, working to help an endangered species, let's say for my area, it's called a golden cheek warbler. 
Um, if you go and see one, you pretty much just then submit an email saying, hey, where I was, submit it, here you go. So this is a serious technological advancement on that because I know if scientists need anything, it's community support. And so that's really great because that like exponentially increases increases data capture for scientists. So that's, that's, that's wow, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. You had mentioned that it was a uh, great use case for, for blockchain. Um, was that just kind of like the natural progression? I mean, what kind of led to uh, coming into the crypto space for this kind of network? So so first, let me give you a disclaimer. I'm I'm not technical, right? So mm. I have a hand in pretty much everything non-technical at Nodal. Uh, so I know just enough engineering to make myself dangerous to others. <laughs> but uh, the, the the way the way that I, I think about it, I've been around Nodal you know, from, since pretty early on is, uh, we, we had, uh, you know, Misha and Garrett co-founders came up with this really, really elegant way to solve this technical slash economic problem around building low cost wireless networks. And they, it, it's, it's for, from a commercial standpoint, it's really very compelling. And so we were able to go into like huge corporations because we have this solution to a, a very big problem they have. And they, they listed our solution. They say, Hey, that's, that's fantastic. And then inevitably, like we get in the room because of the economics, but always their first question after that would be, tell us about the privacy and tell us about the security bottles. And, and you know, what, what we're talking about is not tracking billions of things. We're talking about tracking or, you know, communicating with trillions of things. You add up all these different inanimate objects out there. There's yeah. trillions of things we want to, we want to be able to communicate with. And we, we quickly realized the only way to build a scalable security model uh, that could handle that that level of data is is to decentralize it, right? I, I come from sort of finance and telecom side of things. And in telecom, the more distributed you can make a solution, the more robust, the more secure it can be. And so in the case of what we were trying to do at Nodal, uh, we, uh, from almost, you know, not, almost day one, it was like, oh, this has to be on the blockchain. This has to be decentralized. Otherwise, the security model won't scale. And the obvious yeah. answer is, is blockchain. That and makes that's, a lot and of that's, sense. Yeah, and that's how we, that's how we ended up building that that way that's uh that's actually that makes a lot of sense um so is that kind of what drew you personally to nodal i um so yeah so i'll take a step back I, I like i said i come from a finance background i worked in wall street for for many many years and then went on to a series of operating companies uh and uh um what, yes uh I actually, when I was, I was, a, I was an analyst, like I was, I was publishing sell side analyst at a bank on in Wall Street, and in 2011, I wrote a report on Bitcoin. Okay. Right, because I was, I, you know, I was in the Valley and I was paying attention to interesting technology, yeah. and uh, uh, the bank, I won't name them because they have enough problems. <laughs> I, uh, they uh, they spiked my report. They wouldn't let me publish it. I tried for you know a year to write about Bitcoin in 2011, and it was just like. It was pointless because they they didn't understand it and they called it gambling and speculation and so I, I've been around uh, blockchain stuff for a long time. Uh, in hindsight, I should have not wasted my effort publishing. I should have figured out how to buy Bitcoin in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 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 so I, from, I I've been interested in around it for a long time. Uh, Misha, CEO, co-founder. Uh, I've known him for a long time as well because he and I both worked in wireless things. He's done a number of startups always around communicating and lowering the price of communications around the world. He moved to the Bay Area 15 years ago, and I, I met him very early on, and uh, I just stayed in touch with him. And, you know, what, four, four or five years ago, I, you know, he and I were catching up, and he told me, oh, I've started this company, Nodal, and this is what we're doing. And I was just, I was so blown away by the vision uh, that I left my cushy, cushy cor corporate gig. <laughs> and uh join startup life man that is a common theme in in the blockchain industry that i've i've heard about is just you know people leaving their cushy jobs and, and going and doing something that they they think is going to change the world and uh it yeah. definitely sounds like nodal is on track to actually do that so um it, it's it's amazing you know just when i even first started reading about it because y'all it seems like y'all came out of you know came out of nowhere uh it was like one day nodal you know no one knew what nodal was and then bam like everyone knows what Nodal is now, you know, in, in the Polkadot ecosystem. And um, it, it was just amazing kind of how it happened. Like even me reading about it, um, I see the vision. I think it's it's something that, you know, even I want to support. Um, so it's it, it's crazy. Uh, I definitely think this is an amazing vision and can see why you, 
you would want to leave a job like that. Um, Th- thank you, thank you for saying that. I, I appreciate I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, we're we're an over overnight success. That's uh, four years in the making. No, <laughs> but no, that's good though. Is it you know things take time. But uh, as a uh, through my communications yeah. and, and and marketing career, one thing I've I've seen is if you have a really great product that does a really great thing and or things and is really helpful, like uh, that kind of meteoric growth is is a result of that because it just hits a hits a need so hard. And like I mentioned from the the sci- scientific data capture point, I'm not sure there's a lot of a lot of college friends that I just mentioned this idea to that would just be one very very uh, um, hesitant that it exists because they're just such in such a, a way when it comes to data capture. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it, it is is really incredible. Um, so speaking of the incredibleness of Nodal, like what are some of the I guess the um, unrealized aspects? Um, you know, because we know that data capture is, is one thing. We know that climate capture is one thing. Um, is there, like, any other kind of, uh, I guess, can you talk about any other plans coming? Or is that kind of like a, you know, um, a little bit off limits? I, I, no, I can I can talk about it in sort of general, general terms. I don't, I, I, I don't like to put too much of the roadmap out there. But certainly, sure. um, I mean, the, the, the way that we envision this is, you know, today... You know, we have this network, and it's uh, it's comprised of. I actually haven't described how it works, but uh, the the key thing about Nodal is that it's built entirely in software, right? Which is a really really big difference from how we've always built wireless networks, right? Uh, if you want to build a wireless network with cellular today, uh, you have to go put up base stations and antennas and cabling and towers, and it costs you know to build a nationwide network in the U.S. today would cost ten billion dollars. We we built this network. Uh, for much, much, much less than that, um, uh, and we and the, the key is we did it all with software, and uh, because it's a software network, it it, it can be uh, offered up to customers as sort of enterprise software as a service. Okay. Really straightforward, really simple to do, um, and ultimately we think it's going to be an API, right? It's a set of programming interfaces you can use just like you would use AWS or Google Cloud or Azure. And you, you build your application and you write your application and you just make calls onto our network to get the communication need covered. And and, and it's almost as simple as that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we started out, we built the first few applications, but ultimately we think people will be able to build their own applications and communicate across our network, you know, programmatically with software. And I think that's, that's gonna be really, really powerful easy way for people to explore and discover and create new things. No, oh, that's, that's incredible. It was like to, and I, I to expand on the software uh, point you're making uh, to, to visualize in my mind, what I see you guys are doing is laying like internet cable throughout the world. But instead of actually big digging up the ground, putting that that cable in, you guys are able through software to be able to create this connected network and, my mind was blown during um, Mainnet 2021 when when you when you were speaking with um, Dan Reeser from Akala and Ken Seif from Blockchain Ventures when you get when the uh, shipping example was was provided and I've I've spoke about it before but still mind mind still coming down from how much disruption we would see and so the idea that you could take a stablecoin mesh network and 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 be able to change the shipping industry from a, pal- a pallet being shipped over can it can have a Bluetooth sticker on it. And then with the nodal network, you'd be able to ch- you just make that kind of impact where suddenly you go from what, like a week or so of, 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 of dealing with a shipping container to instantaneous like that. That's incredible. So, yeah. So, so uh, shipping containers, I, I actually think of even more prosaic things like shipping, shipping pallets, you know, those wooden, mm-hmm platforms that are, you see in Costco all the time, right? There are, I, I've heard different numbers, but something like 5 billion shipping pallets in the world. Wow. And wow. right. And <laughs> most of them cost like $200 a piece. Like it's, it's not expensive, but it's still like 500, sorry, $200 times 5 billion is, is a big number. Mm-hmm. Um, and nobody knows where they are, right? Yeah. There's, there's actually a, a fairly sizable industry of people tracking them down and bounty <laughs> programs to bring them back. Because somebody owns them, like there's a, there's a handful of companies that own these five billion, and you know I think they would like to know where they are. And <laughs> I, 
you know, I've, I've heard different estimates, but they lose, you know, 10, 15, 20% of them a year, which is, a, it ends up being a big number. <laughs> it's like a billion. Isn't that like a billion dollars of just the wood? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, uh, and, and so being able to recover those and track those, uh, is, is something that's very, very, uh, easy to see an ROI for, comp- for corporate to sort of have a simple way to track them. Mm-hmm. Right, they they could glue a cell phone to it and track them all, but the, the cell phone and the service is going to cost more than the pallet. Yeah. yeah. So if we can get, you know, we can get a little Bluetooth label, uh, and these things co- these things cost like fifty cents today. They're mm-hmm. super cheap, and it's it's disposable. You just put a, basically you're just putting a sticker on it, uh, and then through our network, be able to locate even a small percentage of those is is a really really. A compelling idea for the company. Like this. I, I think every parent in the world is suddenly going to be knocking on Nuttall's door about, about putting a Bluetooth sticker on their kid, and they'll be like, "Hey, you want a new sticker yeah. today? Here, put it on. Constantly wear it." <laughs> I um, yeah, I, I think tracking people and children. Is... Children's different, not people. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying people. I'm, I, I own that person until yeah. they're 18 years old, so I'm, I, I want to know where they are, and if they're about to mess up, I want to at least have my 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 mouth in their ear saying, "Hey, let's consider this option." <laughs> Yeah, I, I uh, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm focused on inanimate. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I bring, I'm a, I'm a parent. I constantly, you know, where are my kids? What are they doing? What was that noise? Is pretty much my my life. So. Um. What was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or worse, yeah. or worse. Why is it so? Quiet? Why is oh yeah. man? Why is it so that's quiet? Worse. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's like that's like hair sticking up. You're like, okay, my spidey <laughs> senses are telling me chaos is afoot. Um, yeah, let's uh. Let's, let's uh, move, move on here. So, yeah. so what, one thing, one thing I just wanted to add because I realize I haven't discussed it is how our how our network works, and I think it's I think it's interesting, yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, especially especially for your community. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I I keep saying we our network works entirely in software. So right? how does how does that actually play out? And so what we we've done is we incentivize people to install our software on their hardware. Mm-hmm. And when I say hardware, I mean any kind of electronic hardware. It can be a laptop. Uh, it can be people who use old smart TVs. Uh, it can be Raspberry Pi. It's a really lightweight solution. Mostly, though, it means smartphones. And we have this little piece of software that we get installed on apps. And we have our own app, Nodal, the Nodal Cash app. You can go and download it today on Android and uh, Play Store and the, uh, the App Store. Um, uh, but it also means we work with third-party app developers. And we integrate our... Uh, our SDK and it runs in the background on their app and it, it's fully permissioned and a lot of times it's fully disclosed people know that it's there uh, and and so then the person who's installing that software earns mining rewards right and and then what it happens is that that hardware the smartphone becomes effectively a hotspot or a base station for our network mm-hmm. and it communicates with all the ambient sort of IOT and other objects nearby uh, and and you think about it, you're just, you know, any, anywhere you're sitting, you're walking down the street, there's probably, you know, every block, there's a few thousand Bluetooth devices and other electronic devices that pass by. And, yeah. and so through that, like we, we stitch all those individual hotspots together and, and we can present it to customers and it looks like a single unified network. Uh, and, and through that, we have this big network. And, um, wow. and I, you know, and uh, like I said, anyone who's, who is installing the software, we want to encourage them to do that, which is, uh, you know what we use our our token for our mining okay. and it's effectively mining we call it mining rewards right so you're mining it you're mm-hmm. not doing big compute in a in a data center by a hydroelectric plant you're just you the individual can run on the phone <laughs> and and for me actually this is one of the most exciting things about nodal is if you want to mine bitcoin today you need to you need to have a nuclear power plant right <laughs> right it's yeah. it's a scale business mm-hmm. yeah. uh, it's very hard for an individual to mine a cryptocurrency uh, but with Nodal, with Nodal, anybody with a smartphone, which is you know almost everybody on the planet now, kind of like, kind of like this one. Uh, there you go. I'm a no, I'm a yep. Nodaler. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if anybody with a smartphone can can put it on their phone and and earn and mine rewards, and I think that's a, that's a really really powerful idea. It is. That's to me it just, yeah, super important. Yeah, and, and especially it, with how yeah. the next billion people are supposed to be coming online, you know, it's going to be through that mobile that mobile device yeah. uh, more than likely. You know, it's just the least expensive option. So. And, and that and yeah. that like small reward because we as as like the biggest challenge to all of all of blockchain and crypto is a, is adoption and barriers barriers to adoption and how we solve them. And I think I think the the nodal apps are really really great 
entry for people because it's just like the crypto is almost like learning a whole nother f level of finance mixed with technology with it's just like it's like there's a it's like a class in in school we just all never took but then now it should it should be a class you should learn like it's just it's such an interesting thing but like entrance into crypto takes this either red pull moment where a good buddy or a family member is like this is the deal here's that here's your guardrails and then expand yourself but with like nodal you could go to a play store or apple store download the app and you're you're nodaling and, and and also like i love the the modes too i'm on furious mode all the time I'm, I'm 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 going hard hard in the paint um as much as i can um but uh that's just a really cool way because it's like it's about it's, then it's about earning and it's about contributing to the network contributing to the community and i think once more and more people realize crypto is about community and not just about you know grabbing a coin at, at a low cost and then selling it at a high it really realize this is I, that's why i consider myself a crypto citizen i think once people see it it's more of like a uh, it's just way more than just having value. And I think no Nodal's app is a really great entry to people to see like you to do things, to be included, be a part of your community and really break those barriers. That, I mean, that's, that's really eloquent. You put that really, really well, not just about Nodal, but about crypto in general. That's, that's a really good way of, of, of phrasing Thank it. You. I, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, great. Let's, uh, so, uh, as we talk about with, uh, I think this kind of comes to then the point, um, polka dot, uh, you look, you guys are go going for an auction spot soon. What's a, what was, how did, how did you guys select the polka dot? And then what's a, what are you guys looking at in terms of, um, uh, the auction going forward? Okay. So, yeah, so we, we started, we started originally on stellar cause we knew we were going to have very large number of transactions going across our network. Um, right? Trillions of things. That's, I mean, we're already pulling down crazy amounts of data every day. And uh, very, very quickly, we, we uh, outgrew Stellar and, and, no, and no shade on them. Like, they, they were a fantastic partner. They supported us a lot. They were, they were very good. But uh, we, we realized we needed to have more control over our own roadmap. And so we started looking at some of the different options out there. And we, we came to poke it up fairly quickly, um, because it, it gave us the highest level of control. It let us build our own chain, but a chain that we knew would eventually be uh, able to integrate composable with other chains. Uh, and so uh, we, we, we came to Polkadot about two years ago. Wow. Uh, and, 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 you know. Because early adopters. For, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, yeah, I, yeah, I think it was about 18 months, two years ago, something like that. And, you know, so one of the things, like I mentioned before, we have our own app. And you can earn uh, rewards in that. And we, we would ultimately like you to be able to use those rewards to buy things in the app. And so we started looking at different ways to do that. And so we, we, we found an interesting project and we, uh, a company that was selling a service that we could easily, that we could integrate. And it, it seemed very straightforward to, to do just from sort of strategic and the app. And it, then it took six months to paper, mm -hmm. like to do the contracting. And it's going to take, uh, you know, another six to nine months to do the engineering integration. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's, that's a, like, it, for, for me, like my job is to negotiate this contract. It was just like, it was painful because it's one of those contracts with two columns and really small, <laughs> small fonts. And it was just yeah. a 12 page contract mm -hmm. to go through. Clause 2A, uh, like 7D, you know. Clause 27A, <laughs> yeah. It was just, oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. it was, it, you know, it, and, and again no no everyone was super it was a very it was a very constructive relationship but it was just like the na the whole nature of this traditional way of uh, of of doing integrations was was painful yeah, fric lots as of opposed friction, to yeah. right there's lots of friction and as opposed to we're going to have hopefully a parachain soon uh and then it becomes really easy to integrate right and suddenly i don't have to like go out and pick one partner and spend months and months doing the work to integrate with them mm -hmm. It, it doesn't become instantaneous with the parachain, but it becomes much, much easier. And I'm sort of yeah. like, for me, it's, I suddenly have this whole catalog of things to choose from for partners. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, that's you know, a lot more fun <laughs> going and doing it one by one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, with, uh, with, with, 
So with jo- becoming a pair chain, and one of the one of the common themes uh, seems to be that it's what not only what is y- your pair chain going to do, but then how does it benefit the community? Um, seems to be kind of a, a common a common theme when it comes to as as competition ramps up for spots. Um, what a, what 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 is uh, understanding what nodal N- nodal does as it enters the uh, a live uh, live spot? What what does it do for the, for the community? So. So let me let me first answer uh, like our timing, yep. right? We're we're uh, we anticipate participating in batch two, mm-hmm. uh, which is what's that slot five, slot six? I forget. Uh, okay. But it starts December twenty third, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, <laughs> two days before Christmas. Thank you. Uh, um, we know we so know yeah, what you want uh, for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and so. Uh, I, I would say just just the process we've gone through alone of, of you know we're, we have a, a crowd loan out there coming soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's you, you can go to uh, parachain.nodal.com and and find all the details about that or some of the details. And uh, I, th- this exercise alone has been uh, huge in building the community. Like we've we've gotten all kinds of support mm-hmm. online on all our, our channels, our Discord, and our Telegram groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of interest in it. Um, Polkadot has a really, really strong community, uh, and you know we, we we've been very well received. We're very grateful for the reception we've gotten from that community. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you know, we we want to be the IoT solution for for Polkadot, uh, and and lots of people are interested in that. It really resonates with with a lot of people in the community, and so we've got a a, a good. We have a wait list for participants in the in the in the in the crowd loan mm-hmm. uh, community. Has been super supportive of that. We've got a good good sized waiting list going. So. Oh, great! So the the IoT solution for the Polkadot network, which I think is as as we as 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 the network scales with with more parachains, so that's that's really that's really important because I I think it's real hard to take and 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 we use the physical laying wire compared to you guys using a software version of creating a network. I think is, the IoT solution for the Polkadot network is extremely important because as the web three disruption hits physical lives. It's going to be important when it comes to, uh, uh, having, you know, having a solution that's decentralized yet scalable for IOT. And that's, you know, devices all over the house, not just phones, but, um, uh, yeah, no, that's, no, that's really great. And, you know, it's something that you don't really, um, I can't really think of any, you know, maybe one other app that does something similar, but it's not even in the same, realm as as what y'all are hoping to do and and what y'all plan on doing um so this is one of the more interesting uh projects for me personally you know just seeing what's coming out um over the past uh month uh with the parachain auctions i definitely think that this is one of the more unique teams um is there i just wanted to ask was there like a specific reason not to deploy on kusama or anything um it, it just seems like y'all kind of knew what you wanted so it, it makes sense to just go to polka dot um but yeah yeah i mean um we, we certainly have had that debate internally uh i think our, our just our, our take was uh ultimately we knew we wanted to be on on polka dot and substrate mm-hmm. and uh uh, and our network is live. Like, I mean, our network has been live for three years now. Mm-hmm. And so, um, it, it, you know, it, I, we felt like, yeah, you know, Kusama right by definition is, is for testing things out. Mm-hmm. And we were a little bit, uh, I think, past I that. think we felt we were ready to just go to be past that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so, you know, why wait? Mm-hmm. No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And just for, you know, our viewers out there watching, you know, these uh, no, the nodal team is established. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, yeah. you know, a lot of the projects in, in the Polkadot ecosystem, they, they're they're well established. But um, you know, with the three year history and all that stuff, it's um, I would say you're you're one of the more established teams. So um, that actually is amazing, and uh, just the fact that y'all have been able to, you know, be live and and get the kinks out and everything and, and coming straight to polka dot y'all are actually setting a, a very good example for the future um for future projects even you know mm-hmm. um y'all are pretty much showing that hey uh <laughs> you don't have to always go to kusama so yeah. and then my, uh, migration of other projects to the polka dot ecosystem too because it's it was we talk about with their establishment um or at how how early uh they were they were on, on the network yeah that makes sense why you know um 
Yeah. So speaking of uh, with the with the auction yesterday, um, uh, Nodal and Parallel Finance had a uh, Twitter space, which uh, which you guys uh, mm -hmm. announced um, that Parallel Finance is going to be involved with uh, helping with your uh, Nodal's crowd loan. Or can you can you go into that a little bit? Uh, I, I don't want to give all the details out because we haven't. I don't think we've announced them all fully. Gotcha. But yeah, we're we're working we're working with Parallel uh, on a, a bunch of different ways to su support our crowd loan. Okay. Parallels, Amazing. you know, Parallels obviously really advanced and is doing some really interesting things mm -hmm. around the network. Definitely. Uh, and so, okay. yeah, it's been a lot of fun working with them. Oh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I came to that talk just like 10 minutes late. I was in the middle of making dinner for my family and I was like, oh, that talk's happening. So I was like, I'm going to get on. So I, I asked a question. I was literally hands deep in queso trying to get nachos ready. <laughs> and so I, I kind of felt discombobulated. So I apologize for my question coming out. But the the gaming thing really did kind of key, uh, really resonate with me when as soon as I downloaded the app, really excited. I, I, I'm kind of out in the, a, a bit far from San Antonio, but I'm still around other, it was, I was surprised. I was like, oh, there's other people, there's other people around here fantastic and then when i saw the app it made me really think of uh, a game i play uh, called ingress which is uh made by the same uh, company called dynantic which makes pokemon go which is a I, I, they gotta i they need to market a, a new phrasing or way of saying is i don't know it's like proximity gaming regional like location gaming yeah. it, they call it ar but like pokemon's ar and that you can see things anyway so um ingress is this kind of like big global battle where you're either enlightened or resistance and you go around and you uh gain energy and hack uh po pretty much uh shared points and then you're you're battling the other team anyway it, it creates people moving around and uh, in college, it had me going out and walking places I would never walk before, so because I would go hit these places. But then I immediately think I was like, oh, so these these groups, these communities are very similar in that like they could definitely benefit from yeah. each other of of like going because like going on missions or or or, or some kind of collaboration. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, uh, the relationship, and then it ends yeah. up you guys are like blocks away from each other, feet away from each other. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean we. Uh, yeah, if you download our app, you'll see there's a map a map built into it, so you can sort of see where you are, and you get a sense of all the all the Bluetooth and IoT things that are nearby. Uh, and and we have a, a function called a feature called missions, mm -hmm. uh, which which is along those lines, like go you know go to some go to some location and you get an extra reward. Uh, and uh, it's it's we've we've heard this comparison for a long time. You know, people call it the Pokemon Go of crypto. <laughs> Uh, which is, you know, very high praise. Um, yeah, and, yeah. and so we're, you know, we're, we're, we're planning that out. We have more, more missions coming. Great. Um, and, and, you know, cause, cause we're, we're essentially trying to gamify our network. Uh, I, I, right. And in the sense that, you know, ultimately we will have customers who want to use the service, right. They have shipping pallets that they want to find. And so, you know, let's, let, we, we can have a, a mission where everybody goes to the, the Costco, the, the far corner of the Costco parking lot to see if there are any, you know, shipping pallets that have been left there. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't think we have anything that quite precise, yeah. but like, yeah, but yeah, it's certainly that idea that, that we're gamifying it, and yeah. it, it's something we've been we've been thinking about for a while. And we, you know, after after lockdown, we we found a co working space, mm. and I remember I was walking walking there one day, and I realized that Niantic's office was mm. literally next door to our co working <laughs> space. Wow, <laughs> and and so uh, every day I'm reminded I have to go. I have to go track them down and talk to them. That, that could be a lot of fun to work. Oh, with. I bet they have oh, all yeah. like all the the top level um, uh, checkpoints all around their place because that that would be a, a gold mine if you're if you're playing Ingress. I'm assuming <laughs> like I, that that's going to be my uh, uh, if I come to come to the Bay Area again, uh, it will be I'll have to go go see y'all and then go by the office, uh, the Niantic office. That's no, that's really neat. Um, yeah, and I think it's 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 cool because then we look at the the app and the missions, and then you it's it's. It's interesting that like uh, the behaviors not only will cr cr be better for the network, but then you have people doing more things and going outside and do, like that kind of help. Where it's like it's 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 um, technology and and blockchain helping people be more healthy because like that's something you know if you guys are being called kind of the Pokemon Go right. of of you know blockchain, that's a really big 
big statement because then yeah. Pokemon Go did more for childhood obesity than like more, probably more than any one maybe individual person. <laughs> like it's, 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 right. it's a crazy right. statement, but it's like, I think it's true. And then it's like, when you, you get, when you mix that with tech, I think it's overall just such a great, great outcome because then people are earning at the same time they're helping out. And then like, I go back to the, the climate thing. If there's like somehow in the future, you guys connect with researchers and you're like, Oh, Hey, we need a lot of people walking this one area because then if we get the different climate readings at these different blocks, then we're able to say, this is what the temperature fluctuations are at that time. This impacts this species of animal. So we're going to make this change. And then suddenly N Nodal's the N Nodal's creating the change of saving species. So like I, 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 I may be drawing far lines here, but I, I, when I see the innovation, I see things are going that amount of data capture. You, you get those with yeah. people that are trying to, you know, help either species, situations, environments, like that's huge. And so I see, that's where I see in the future. And that really excites me. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was the first mission we had was the first week of lockdown. <laughs> and the mission was don't go anywhere. <laughs> don't go anywhere for 24 hours you get a bonus <laughs> right right and and i know i know there are people who just sort of put the client on their tv <laughs> which never moved anyway yeah. but that, that's fine that's fine I'll, I'll, you know achievements i, I just see achievement <laughs> that is interesting you said that uh you know some some people put it on their tv so it's not just like a you know smartphone thing it's it's definitely something that any is, hardware yep any hardware just to any hardware that yeah, it, and it's it's I, I, we have a community. Uh, it's on our Discord channel where people people like do what the internet is good for, which is like you know this, you have this community of people saying, "Hey, I've modded this hardware. I modded that hardware." And there, I mean, all kinds of interesting stuff. There. I mean, I would we would have never thought to put it on TV, and there's somebody who's done that on our, our in our community out there. Um, we've had people put it on Raspberry Pi. We're gonna have a I think official <laughs> client for that pretty soon. <laughs> but I that's you know that's that's crazy. The Raspberry Pi thing. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to the science science part of it too. Is is pretty big because then it's like if you're able to work out something uh, with certain researchers, they're able to like just bring with them. Uh, they have their own tracking and stuff like that. But then there's like yeah, it's still the Raspberry Pi makes it even more um accessible because you know as you mentioned with phones data plan uh buying the phone but if you're a raspberry pi there's chances for even really just tiny small devices that can can help yeah tiny small devices i mean my, my personal favorite solution is to put it on old old cell phones uh i don't know if you can see but all that back there that's my my old cell phone collection. i mean i got them i got them all do you have the nokia brick uh, I, do you have the brick i have i have I have a we yeah, I have the big Motorola <laughs> oh, that one man. too square one uh, I have one of those yeah I and uh, you know I, I you know eventually I'm gonna put note on all of those <laughs> I have to, the 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 limitations I need to find the power cords for a lot of them <laughs> you'd be playing snake at one minute and then you're like oh hold on I'm a I'm a right. note exactly. real quick um oh that no it's great um that's funny oh no this is this, this has been really great um um judge do you have uh do you have any more, qu more questions you have? Um, I just had one, and really it's, you know, it's uh, definitely something that I think, um, you know, there are some projects in this space that plan on kind of going their own route after a few years, maybe with Polkadot. And I was just wondering, um, you know, does Nodal kind of, do y'all plan on sticking with the Polkadot uh, ecosystem? Are y'all going to, is there plans to, you know, go, go a separate route later on once uh, things are a little bit more established? Or can you speak on that? I, I no, I, I our our plan is to stick with Polkadot. Excellent. You know, it, Excellent. It, it, it's a really really good balance of uh, having good support, but also having enough flexibility to be able to control our own roadmap. Right? Yeah. Uh, I talked before when we switched from from Stellar, we really want to control our own roadmap and add things like smart contracts, all these features that we can add, and we have control over that. What our product's going to look like, what our service, what our network's going to look like, and. Um, uh, Polkadot has done a, a really good job of, of making that possible, and so I don't I don't think we've ever even talked about coming what you know what comes next. So yeah, we're in it. Well, in it for the long haul. That's what I like to hear. What does um, <laughs> yeah uh, Jay the individual um, maybe not employee number three or CFO, but uh, in the future, how do you what do you see with with Polkadot? And that's a very general question, but like I think that really shows how people are thinking about it and i think there's so many different ways too because it's going to be so so many things what what's polka dot to you in two to four years i i um i look at it like like the app store right it's just like 
I mean, we're already starting to see this, like with, with, the, with the parachain stuff coming out, with all the auctions going on, we're starting to look at all the people who are participating. Mm -hmm. And it, it feels like a whole bunch of projects have come out. I mean, maybe just I, I, we weren't aware of them before, but now you're starting to see some of these really interesting projects coming out, coming along. And for me, I'm like a kid in the candy store. Because like I said, I, I want to find partners to work with. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now I have this whole catalog. And it, it feels a lot to me like, like the App Store, like the Apple App Store. Um, I, I don't know if you all remember a time before smartphones, but like in 2007, there were no apps, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you, you got what was on your phone. And it was, right? You, like you said, the snake game. Yeah. Texting was, was the most incredible thing. You mean like I was in, I was in middle school, <laughs> right. high school. I was like, I can send a message to my buddy and it doesn't require paper. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. I mean, yeah, the, the killer app for feature phone for years was a was a one bit snake game. Right. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I uh, right. And, and I, I think we're in, in for something similar now. The fact that all these things can now work together uh, and all these projects are out there and we can start plugging them in in different ways like Lego bricks. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm oversimplifying technically, but still, like it, it's, it, there's an element of that. It feels a lot to me like the App Store mm -hmm. where there's all these all this interesting creativity getting getting unbundled and powered up by the, by the polka dot. Uh, and that to me just is a, it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it is exciting too because, yeah, I would say with other blockchain, maybe D apps come out, things of that nature. But with, with polka dot, you have like just like groundbreaking – T, uh, projects that could be joining suddenly, you know, no, it's not that sudden, but at the same time in the blockchain technology uh, timelines, like all this, you, you, you could be, you know, all of a sudden working with a new partner that's, you know, changing the, changing the game. So no, that's, no, that's really, yeah. uh, no, no, that's really, uh, that's, that's great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess any, 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 any last words, Jay, any, uh, um, uh, anything else you'd like to mention? No, I think, I think we've covered it. I really uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys do a great job Thank you. and, and, uh, it's, it's really, it's very exciting for us to be part of this community. Oh yeah. Uh, us too. And I think that's from the, from the, from the beginning, we're, we're very early with how we're starting and what we're doing, but what we're doing is solely so that we can have these kind of conversations. Um, a lot of people out there talking about price as it goes up, goes down, but really where we want to be is talking about the tech, the future and how, how polka dot can be it, it influencing you know a, a, almost everything we do we have a, a lot of disruption on the horizon i think this is a great platform to be able to help people understand and then make choices on on, on who they uh, on who they support like supporting nodal in the upcoming uh, uh spot five or six uh, uh spot auction i'll be I'll, I'll i'll be joining in i i uh i think you guys are are, are really on on the on the cusp of doing something great for science and humanity. So, um, uh, and, and yeah, and that's, that's me, Ryan, not, 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 not paid or promoted by not at all. This is just such an incredible technology that I'm, I'm in. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you very much. And if anybody's interested and wants to learn more about that, we have parachain.nodal.com and, uh, it's a good place to go look and, you know, looking forward to seeing everybody around the community. All right. Well, we're, we're look, look forward to see you see you guys winning that spot auction and uh, and 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 growing from there. Um, thank you again, Jay. This has been so great, um, and uh, we hope to we'll hope, hope to have you on soon again. Good Looking luck forward to it. Ton of fun. Hey, yeah, pair of chin hoxes. Yeah, Check you. them out. Thank you. All right. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you everybody for watching. This has been a really great episode. Uh, keep 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 an eye out for more videos, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be talking to more community members. Have a great day.